You are watching With a Cup of Tea, a production of This House of Books, an independent bookstore cooperative and tea shop in downtown Billings. Now, here's our show. I'm here today at This House of Books with Adrian Jawart, and Adrian has just uh, presented to us from his new book, Moonrise, Moonrise Falling, a Modern Gothic Tale. Um, we're going to talk about that. First of all, Adrian, why don't you tell us a little about yourself? Um, well, I am a Northern Cheyenne author, and I have been writing since I was a little kid, I guess, creating little books. And let's see. And I'm also a journalist. I've been doing that since like the early 2000s. I uh, originally started off majoring in art, like painting and drawing and stuff. And then I just, that art was always, you know, and writing, you know, I just kind of wanted to do graphic novel stuff. And that's kind of where the idea of Moonrise Falling came from. Was I wanted, the storyline was kind of a graphic novel-ish thing. So mm -hmm. it's a very graphic book, I guess. I mean, okay. Okay. <laughs> so that's why the story pushes ahead pretty fast. And that's kind of a really graphic or noir style I, I don't know it's definitely horror though but oh yeah definitely <laughs> that <laughs> so okay so you're northern Cheyenne uh, grew up right here nearby yes I grew up in Billings but I've lived on various reservations I even lived on the High Line for a while oh and um, I lived on the Crow Res for a couple years um, mm -hmm. I have a daughter from there mm -hmm. and I also um so I'm very affiliated with the Montana Indian stuff. As I said, I write for Indian Country Today, do op ed opinion editorials. I always say op-ed, but, um, mm -hmm. but uh, that's how, kind of how it, off the path books came about. Was um, oh. I had met a, one writer. I was doing an article about a gal who did a documentary. Her name's Cinnamon Spear. She's going to be graduating from the prestigious Iowa Writers Workshop, and um, and she's in there in that one. But uh, yeah, I'm very proud of her. And she's like, I don't even think she's 30 years old yet. She might be. But uh, mm -hmm. anyways, she had showed me some of her work, her fiction stuff, and it just like blew me away. I was like crying when I read it. I was like, yes. do you got any more of this stuff? And then I had some more stuff well, and I kept thinking, well, we could gather up a couple more authors and like make an anthology, but I wasn't totally sure until uh, Sherman Alexie's book, uh, Diary of a Part-Time Indian, it was proposed being banned or something. Mm. And then um, there's so many, there's like a hundred high school kids all passionately defending this book. And I was like, well, we can like yeah there's an audience right there people are yearning for this stuff i mean they want to before it's like well no one wants to read about indians but apparently they do so mm -hmm. you've you've really collected some very impressive authors in here I, I think this is just an outstanding anthology and then to follow up with this one which has actually even a broader uh, base uh it's very impressive yeah and uh one another iowa writers workshop writer I, it's easier to brag about other authors for me anyway being lord cheyenne but <laughs> yeah. sterling holy white mountain he, he had went to iowa and um everyone kept saying well you got to get him in there got to get him mm -hmm. in there i mean mm -hmm. for those who don't know iowa it's like considered like the top writing school in the u.s which would mm -hmm. be the world and you have two writers from it and one little anthology and it's kind of very um, independent book, but at the same time, it's like an impressive level of talent on there, which I'm very proud of. Mm -hmm. And the second book, that one went all the way, had writers from the Southwest, but also um, the Hawaiian gal in there, and she mm -hmm. had won like mm -hmm. a Barnes and Nobles award for her first oh, wow. one, and then there was a Maury New Zealand author in there, mm -hmm. a woman writer named K.M. Harris, and there's also... Um, yeah, a gal, Ellen Van Nierven, uh, Aboriginal author from Australia, and she won like a equivalent of a National Book Award at age 23, and she's in there. And but people are just like eager to contribute, and um, yeah. So 
volume three I hope to have out next year and there's like some a pretty big time writers that want to like <laughs> like I said they're eager to contribute one of them want to um, he's up for a national book award and stuff so it's going to be pretty cool <laughs> yeah I, I, I just find an amazing window into you know what's going on in the 21st century and uh, you know uh, among Native Americans it's just amazing stuff and and breathtaking talent as you say just breathless stuff. So one more thing about you, and then we're going to move on to the book. Um, you are uh, one of the very first members of this bookstore, member owner. Um, in fact, you were at the, the planning meetings before there was ever a board of directors. You were on that steering committee and signed the incorporation papers. What made you want to get involved? Um, just the need for a place a consistent place where we could always have book readings. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, you see the success of other bookstores in other towns, and mm -hmm. I mean, we're still getting there at this place, but kind of want to keep seeing it build. And I like the tea idea. I mean, yeah. I'm drinking this concoction here. I don't know. He just invented it, but it's <laughs> really one, good. So. Yeah, a new one that Gus made up. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, it's good to have that independence um, where we could sell uh, those books you mm -hmm. know because mm -hmm. like if I go to Barnes and Nobles and say well it has to be in this system and then it has to be in the, and you know mm -hmm. it has to be out nationwide and they but here it's just like well you know if you want that book just go to the mm -hmm. house of books so yeah well we do specialize in the in the regional authors and I I'm very pleased with that too okay so Moonrise Falling. Um, this is uh, not my genre, <laughs> but uh, tell me about it. Um, yeah, that's one of the first things I always tell people is I almost warn them. I'm probably not the worst salesman ever for it because I always say it's not like the stuff in the off the path that I do. I mean, some of the stuff I have in there has violence and stuff, but mm -hmm. this is kind of like right. almost like Quentin Tarantino-ish or something. It's kind of pushes right along. It starts off pretty crazy and it never lets up really. I mean, but it, it's mostly about, it kind of tells at the end, well, he mostly wrote it. It's about a gal named Deidre in there and mm -hmm. it kind of follows her story, which isn't, you know, it's pretty just crazy all around. I don't want to give away too much, but um, the thing is, um, it, Vampire stories, I kind of wanted the, I like the universe of Anne Rice's characters. And there was a story in the um, Queen of the Dam, a short chapter. And I read it when I was like a teenager, 17 or something. And there's like a 16 year old vampire girl in there. And I just, it was like a really short chapter. Then she gets killed by the Queen of the Dam. But it was just like, well, that was an interesting character. What if we kept following her, just all of her thoughts, or delve deeper into a modern character? And that's what it was. It was a modern character, just basically of a tie -out. It doesn't say the name, but it's basically described as a small in hub industrial city, which would be Billings, of course. And then, and then like, it's a lot of psychology in there of like what it does to their head, because everyone thinks Twilight, vampires, sexy, and you know, but these people have to kill people to, you know, keep going. And it's like, it's going to screw with their head a lot. And it's like, yeah. And then um, the Deidre character, she picks him specifically just because she knows he's cold blooded, the characters. So they're not like these really likable characters or nothing. But, you know, and they're like most book characters in their own heads, you know, they have a conscience and everything. They're doing mm -hmm. the right thing according to them. But, you know, it, it starts screwing with his head having to kill people all the time that just kind of follows that tra trajectory and he kind of there's like a lingering it's like on the first chapter at the end he's like praying to jesus really hard and stuff and then it, it kind of i just notice it kind of follows a whole little thread throughout to we're at the end i don't want to give it away but i guess mm -hmm. he almost renounces it just kind of like well that was his last lingering you know sanity almost was and he ended up becoming like Deidre because he's always wondering, well, how'd this girl get so cold-blooded? And mm -hmm. So Deidre, yeah, she's really fascinating, but she has a... 
Most of my readings, I read this chapter about Deidre, where she was, um, she was like, uh, molested and stuff, and ends up stabbing her stepdad with a pair of sewing scissors, and it's like crazy stuff like that throughout, mm -hmm. but I want to not just make it violent for the sake of violence, but make it really literary, too, and experimental, mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and that's one of the compliments I've gotten on it, is it's although it's violent, it's very literary. yeah, it's very literary too. And I wrote the book mostly throughout my twenties, mm -hmm. and most of the storyline, I just didn't have the very ending of it. I didn't know how to end it. I, mean, I didn't mm -hmm. want to just be open ended and keep going and going. Although it could have, because there's new characters introduced and everything. Mm -hmm. I mean, that there could all always be a sequel to that. It leaves it very open to that. But okay, but yeah. Well, let me ask. Uh, let me ask one more uh, question. Just who do you see as the audience for this? Who would like this book? Fans of Anne Rice would definitely ah. like it. Uh, Stephen King fans. Okay. But yeah, it's definitely it's an Anne Rice creative universe. And um, if you're a Twilight fan, I'd say try it. But it's yeah, they're. But most people are like, kind of taken aback, like whoa. Yeah. That, <laughs> that's kind of. <laughs> Yeah, I think I think our audience was kind of gasping at the uh, reading for the other night. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you take some and some of Anne Rice's stuff is a lot darker than it's mm. given credit for, like the Vampire Lestat and stuff. There's some pretty intense stuff in there. And it's basically when I wrote it, it's like write the book you want to read. So and that's what I wanted to read when I was apparently in my 20s. So <laughs> I wouldn't, I still wouldn't change much of it anyway. Even like looking back, I mean, just there's always editing. You're always constantly, I was always constantly tweaking it. But sure. it was like that was the voice of the character written from first person point of view, and that was the voice of the Deidre character, and that's the way they were, and that's you know. <laughs> for better or worse. Okay. Well, thanks a lot, Adrian. That's, uh, you've got some amazing books here, and come on down. Thanks. All right. Thank you, Mark. Sure. This has been a production of This House of Books. If you'd like to be a part of the cooperative, please visit thishouseofbooks.com slash get involved. Which I mm -hmm. made sure the crap. <laughs> and yeah, <laughs> interrupted my own interview. But yeah, uh, where was I? Stupid parent. Um. There's one book called Armand, as it goes back with Satan worshippers and stuff and everything. It's like stuff in there that people just think, well, Tom Cruise interview with the vampire, you know, they're sexy. But it's like, no, she gets pretty dark and in there. And that's and that I just kind of pulled from her universe any anyway, and just um, 